Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 29 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about Westpac has accelerated moving all of its core banking applications into the cloud. After flicking the switch on a new private cloud environment, it says it will make its development 10 times faster and three times cheaper. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great story. Um, ultimately, these guys are moving as fast as a lot of the banks in the US, US are right now. They certainly are. The banks really are embracing this new technology of cloud. So should companies be bragging about the cloud capabilities, Dave? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting point because you know ultimately the uh, you know this becomes kind of proprietary um, you know key differentiator in the market and uh, these banks are going to um, use this as a jumping off point for lots of creativity and innovation in the space and you got to remember bank banking is becoming commodity in terms of how you do trading and exchanges and offering banking services and their ability to leverage cloud to jump above their competitors, you know, will be a key differentiator. But I, I think what they're seeing, saying here is that, uh, you know, we're probably so far ahead, we're gonna go ahead and announce this. And uh, so people will understand that they're the most innovative and creative people, you know, so come bank with them. And, and I, I think this is a step in the right direction. And we have lots of analogs here in the States, uh, you know, that are basically doing the same thing. The banks are, uh, are changing their, um, their IT infrastructure around utilization of public clouds. I mean, it's been decades since the banking industry has seen anything like this with the embracing of cloud. And, you know, it's there's a huge amount of expense with regards to managing cloud for a banking environment. And, and also it's very risky. What other things can you see with regards to that then, Dave? Well, I, I think that ultimately it'll uh, be kind of a five year test period as to, you know, whether this technology is going to be um, viable or not to the extent and, and the value. I think they're, that they're really predicting that it has. And I think that. It's already showing its worth after, say, three years of use, and people have kind of moved their first 100 applications, and now they're moving their second you know, 800 applications, and that's kind of where these guys are right now. And then they get to a saturation point of about 70% of their applications in the cloud, which they probably won't hit for another five years. So the test is going to be their ability to keep a sustainable business around utilization of this technology and their ability to kind of provide key disruptors in the space that are leveraging this technology, allowing them to change faster, move into markets faster, get products to market faster. You know, those sorts of things that banks are notoriously slow at doing. And do you think as a customer, the customers are going to see the continuity of a service or do you think there's going to be a fallout there? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think they're going to start by noticing that the bank is more proactive around their needs, their ability to kind of monitor their accounts and inform them when uh, their 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 assets are low. They inform them uh, around better, you know, viable loan options and in refinancing houses, investment options, things like that. Um, you know, making you know leveraging technology such as machine learning to automatically make suggestions in terms of products that they should basically be looking at. In the uh, at, that the bank offers um, to make them more successful and you know from the, in their finances, and I think those sorts of things are appreciated in the market. We live in the world of Uber and Netflix, where everything's on demand, and we need to pick up a, a mobile phone, and the information comes to us and is able to react to our needs in almost you know uh, real time. And I think that they're heading in that direction, and that's ultimately the future of banking. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely. I think artificial intelligence is playing a massive part in the in the banking world, especially as the Commonwealth Bank have recently publicised about uh, they can now um, suggest 20 million conversation starters with customers just based on their developments with their AI stack, which I think is pretty phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, there's you know almost uh, 1,500 high-level services on Amazon.com alone, or AWS, Amazon Web Services that you're able to leverage and many of them are focused on the financial community. And so those are things you don't have to build. You're able to just point to it, leverage it, bring it down to your applications and you're good to go. And um, you're, if your competitors are building that stuff from scratch, uh, it's gonna take them 10 times as long to get these things into production, sometimes 20 or 30 times as long to get them into production. And I can't imagine that's gonna scale uh, into the future. So if their competitors aren't doing this, they're leaving them behind. 
They really are. And no one wants to be left behind when it comes to artificial intelligence and cloud computing. So, Dave, you know, to close the show off, what are your top three tips uh, that we can share? Yeah, I think, number one, learn from the mistakes of others. I, I think it's funny is that these guys probably monitored the U.S. migration in the cloud, specifically a lot of the banks that were early adopters, many of which are spoke at uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon's reInvent and other conferences and published articles, and, and were very um, forthcoming around the mistakes that they made. And I think that they were able to kind of factor that into their own cloud plans to make sure they didn't repeat those mistakes. And so that allowed them to move faster. Um, you know, when you're careful of sharing information, it's kind of funny here, they went into so much detail of what they're doing in the cloud. I think it's 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 okay if there's some sort of a market benefit from doing that. But, you know, in many instances, um, the bragging about your success in cloud, you know, to people that will listen, including your competitors, you know, may not be always a good idea. You have to consider that, you know, with, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But in this case, I think they're fine and I understand why they're doing it. And then this is about leveraging cloud as a key accelerator. It's not about leveraging technology or what's cool or chasing the shiny objects ultimately. This is about picking technology that's gonna allow you to punch above your weight, uh, which you need to do being any kind of bank in Australia uh, because they have to deal in an international market and they have to basically be creative, more innovative to um, you know wrestle with the big guys. And this is really ultimately the ability to leverage cloud for selfish reasons. And I think that's the perfect Perfectly best reason to leverage cloud. You have to base, basically understand you're trying to improve your business and take it to the next level, which is what cloud is able to do. Yeah, excellent top three tips there, Dave. I couldn't agree with you more, to be honest. And thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be on. Looking forward to next week and, uh, you know, have a good week and, um, you know, don't, don't fall off the bottom of the earth. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying hard not to. It takes a lot of glue to keep this wig on, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank, thanks, Dave. Thanks for being part of the show, as I said. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and colleagues. And also, remember Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching, and look forward to next week.